Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us on our first ever LinkedIn Live event to discuss a topic that's gaining some serious momentum, women in leadership within procurement. I'm your host, Laura, Head of WBR Insights Asia and ANZ, and I'm thrilled to jump into this discussion with a remarkable individual who has shattered glass ceilings in a male-dominated field, making her powerful voice for women in procurement leadership. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Christina Ui. Dr. Christina is a highly accomplished professional with over 30 years of experience in leadership roles across Asia Pacific. A recognized expert in procurement transformation, she's a former chief procurement officer, published author, and sought after speaker. Dr. Christina brings a wealth of knowledge and a proven track record of success to a discussion on women in procurement leadership. Very happy to have you today, Christina. Thank you very much, Laura, for the warm welcome. And hello, everyone. So it's good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening to all of you. I'm so happy that you have actually chosen to spend the next 60 minutes, you know, to engage in this, in all the interesting conversations uh, on this very important topic. Back to you, Laura. Thank you. All right. So without further ado, let's jump in with some thought provoking questions. So we all know procurement is a critical function for any organization, but why do we see fewer women in leadership roles within this field? Uh, I mean, there could be a number of factors at play here. Perhaps the unconscious bias steers women away from considering procurement careers, or maybe the current perception of procurement as a male-dominated field discourages them from aiming for leadership uh, positions. So, Christina, with your extensive experience, can you maybe shed some light on these potential reasons and share your unique perspective? Thank you, Laura. What, what I'm going to say would be just based on my own personal experiences and the life journey that I've gone through all these years, right? Um, let me go back to basics, actually. If you look at procurement historically, historically, procurement is actually, you know, dominated by men stereotyped as a male-dominated uh, uh, profession. And, and why, why is that? Because, um, you know, skills such as um, risk management or hard decision-making, they are kind of masculine strength, you know? And then um, we have uh, compliance and, and governance enforcement and, and tough and hard negotiations, for example these are not perceived to be suitable for women. And of course, the long hours in procurement definitely uh, perceived as not suitable for women. So these are some of the things that if we look back historically, it's been set in that context and ecosystem. And because of that, many women shun from those you know, tough uh, situations at work uh, and deem it as not suitable for me as a woman. So that's my perspective on why, uh, you know, we do see fewer women uh, in leadership roles in procurement per se. Yeah. Okay. okay. So maybe let's delve deeper into our second question. Mm -hmm. Why does procurement specifically need more women leaders? Okay. Um, what I said just now was in the past. I, I would really love to think that. But guess what, ladies, guys, whoever's on this call, is that there's good news today. And what is this good news? In today's world, as we speak, you know, the procurement profession is fast evolving. It, it's a very dynamic profession. We all know this, right? It is fast moving, dynamic, and, and it's demanding as well. But it's fast evolving, shifting our focus from what? From mere cause management. And now, onto what? You know, skills such as value enhancement, uh, collaboration, um, relationship building uh, with stakeholders, internal stakeholders, and externally with suppliers alike. Also, creative thinking. There are problems, issues that will need procurement professionals to come resolve them. And we need to be resourceful and create, have creative thinking, right? And also relationship building other, all these kind of skills. You know, I, I do see them as essential skills which women can actually bring to the table, for sure. So, so suddenly it doesn't sound so hard hitting, so tough anymore, right? 
you know, it's got to do with those relationship communication skills. So these are the ones that women could definitely bring to the table. And when we bring this kind of diversity of skills to the table, what are we actually trying to do here? We're actually trying to drive innovation in today's world, right, of procurement. And we are also trying to look at strategic thinking skills required today in procurement. And above all, leadership. So gone are the days where it's just, you know, just do what I say and just do it. And it's no longer transactional, administrative, and just go by the book, right? There's a lot of, um, you know, opportunities for women and men alike, you know, to be together, you know, because together is better, just so that there's a lot of uh, opportunities on the table that we can actually have, you know, much richer discussions. And I would also want to bring everyone's attention. You may have seen this already, okay? But I think it's really worth uh, mentioning it here. Um, there, there was a recent survey by Olivia Boyman, if you have seen that. Okay, so they actually surveyed 300 CPOs across the world, in Europe, in the US, and in Asia, and across 14 industry sectors. And guess what they found out? There's one point that is so relevant to what we are talking today is the fact that the CPOs who were surveyed, they agreed that, and they perceived that more creativity, more innovation, thanks to what? Thanks to the presence of more women on the teams today. So I think it's about 76%. So it's more than three quarters of the CPO survey said that they have perceived, you know, that there's a lot more creativity, there's a lot more innovation in the things that they do in procurement, thanks to the presence of women on their teams. So I thought that was like, yes, but the journey is still a long one. Yeah, but at least we have been making progress and we cannot stop here. So that's a long answer to your short question, Laura. I mean, absolutely. As much as I hear that there's the importance of having diversity in leadership, I mean, I think there's certain skill sets that women can bring to the table that I think people are embracing right now. So maybe let's shift gears and address a crucial question. How then can we encourage more women to raise their hands and take on those senior roles? Okay, so first of all, on the table is this statement that I hope everyone uh, who is in procurement already know this, uh, uh, but remember this, right? Procurement is the pulse and the conscience of every organization. It's not an easy profession. Because of that, we'll need a lot more diversity. So that's the starting statement. So now, how do we encourage women to raise their hands and, and take on more senior roles? And why, why aren't women doing that? So the way I'm going to respond to that question, Laura, is let's take at two, prong of the, two prongs of the answer. The first prong is what are organizations doing? And then the second prong is what are women actually thinking or doing about it? Okay, so I'll start with organizations first. For me, it's not just corporate talk, please. You know, and it's not just a check in the box and we do it once a year on March 8 on IWD, International Women's Day, and that's it, you know, and yeah, we have done that. No, it's, it's a lifelong thing and it's an ongoing thing and I see it as a culture shift, a cultural shift. So top leadership, uh, 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 top management, uh, it, all hands on deck. To, to move this. So it is not just an HR initiative, you see? So for organizations where there are, uh, for example, uh, gender pay gap, for example, if it exists today, and, those, and these organizations would know it. So do something about it, is what I, I would say. And think about and look at employee benefits. 
and 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 I think it's a blessing in this guys that um, you know we we have this work from home uh, kind of a new normal these days, right? So those days where everyone had to show up at the office, no matter how far you live, and we spend too much time commuting and so on, right? Uh, so so if we look at employee benefits, that are much more flexible, you know, like flex time. I'm sure a lot of organizations have that. Some may not have yet. And then things like work from home is a given today, which is super good. So women can actually take advantage of that. So you see, for, to all the ladies out there, things are moving in our direction in a way. So why aren't you taking advantage of that, right? So, and organizations can also start having ment um, mentorship programs, for example, you know, have inspirational women who have done it, been there, done it, not just in procurement, but across the organization, right? And if you're a global organization, across other locations and whatever else, because these are trailblazers, you know, they trailblaze the way. So as an aspiring woman, I'll be like, wow, I want to be like that too. So the more we talk about it, the better it is for us because women, you know, it, we are not alone. It, it is a common thing. The more we communicate, the more we talk about it, just like this kind of forum is super, super useful because it kind of reveals and puts the thing on the table and say, this is what it is. Let's talk about it, right? Let's tackle it. And things like leadership training as well. So just do that. Have more women, you know, if, if, if the leadership sees that the enrollment of, you know, uh, of, of these uh, participants in leadership training or mentorship is very few uh, women, then encourage them, you know, so and, and, and also create platform of some sort, you know, some companies have online digital platforms, those large organizations, right? So you can actually have master class in that platform, you can go for training there, you know, and you've got international uh, uh, folks, you know, just uh, uh, sharing a lot of things, right? So and, and the other thing which I think we should think about is, you know, like a career comeback program, you know, a lot of women, you know, left the workforce because of family, right? Young children and whatever, right? Reason. And and now maybe they're ready to come back, but don't know how to. And where would you start? It's been 10 years since I left my last role, for instance. What do I do now? Am I still equipped? You know, and where, where should I go? So why can't these organizations keep track of all those ladies who left the organizations and you know contact them again why not when are you ready maybe in two years time maybe now maybe tomorrow right so that kind of a conscious program is what i think it's going to really really help and 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 i think last but not least is we need to hold senior leadership team accountable for gender imbalance today maybe it is fewer women. Tomorrow, it could be fewer men. You know, does not matter. The point of the, uh, the, the, the crux of the issue that we're talking about is where there is imbalance, gender, we need to do something about it. You can't have a situation where there are too many women as well. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, so those are some of the ideas. Uh, some of those larger companies have already embarked on it. But what I'm saying is to all those organizations who have already got all these fancy platforms and what have you, show some marked progress, not just corporate talk, because then it's going to be empty echo. Okay, now I'm going to move to the women ourselves. So what could a woman do? And I'm just going to paint a simple example that I've seen it in front of myself many, many times. When, when there is an opportunity of a new role in the existing organization, you know, and, um, and, and HR would pose that, that vacancy out, right? And you would see the reaction of men and women when they, when they see those vacancies posted. I've seen women in front of me they will go through the job description and they'll go to areas that they don't fit. They'll focus on that. Versus men will look at what are the things that fit their 
qualifications. You see, totally different. And for the women, once they see like, oh my God, I can only fulfill two out of the five criteria. Okay, thank you. It's not for me. But my question to you is, why can't you think about, okay, these are the two out of the five that I can do right now. But what about the three? What would I do if I were to be given such training or exposure, for example? And what would I try to do? Would you want to do it? You need to be intentional. You can't just look at the JD and say, no, I can't, and that's it. But the men would just apply for those roles and then wait and see what happens. So why can't we be like that? So women, first, we need to be bold. We need to be assertive, intentional. Know what you want and go get it. And don't hold back. And you need to be courageous. You know, don't, don't be afraid to take risks, calculated risks, of course, just like the example I gave on the job description. And women will always, most women would think like, oh, what if I fail? Come fly with me, I'll say. No, but what if I fall, Christina? I'll say, but my darling, what if you fly? What if? Have you ever thought of that? So, and you need to be yourself. Don't pretend to be somebody else or don't try and compare yourself all the time with so many other people there. Then, then you keep, you know, withdrawing into your shell to say, oh, I'll never be there. So it's, it's, it's a lot to do with yourself here. Yeah? And, and don't overanalyze and hold back is the example that I just gave. And never self-doubt. Never, ever self-doubt. So you need to fix all these first. If you are the kind that are not assertive, afraid that you would fail, you know, and, and not willing to take calculated risks. But think again, I just told you a couple of minutes ago that the procurement profession is fast evolving. Why aren't we making hay while, it, while the sun shines? Why not? Strike the iron while it's hot. This is the time. What are we waiting for? I don't get it. So if, imagine if organizations were to do all those things that I mentioned consciously and women out there change the mindset, look at things differently, think differently. Even if you feel that you have been, you have lost touch. That's why I hope there are women on this career comeback mode that may be thinking, once my kids grow up to a certain age, maybe, or I've got support system at home now that I can actually go out and, you know, start charting my career. And I'll pick up from where I left off. Why not? What's stopping you? Nobody except yourself. Is, is, that, a, is that a context of uh, how, how I've painted it? Yeah, absolutely, Christina. I think it's not just pertaining to procurement, but I think as a woman myself, these uh, words of wisdom and encouragement, I think it's definitely going to be very useful for any of us who are out there on our own to become leaders in our own fields, I would say. And, I, and, I and just to add, yeah, and just to add to that, because procurement is a transient uh, profession, meaning you can be in any industry, right? From banking to aviation to whatever, FMCG, you know, uh, uh, manufacturing and all that. So it's transient. So meaning to say the choices are a lot more. Very much like HR or finance or marketing or communication. These are all transient roles, right? Uh, and 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 uh, and uh, you can actually just you know apply it across the board. So so if if you're afraid to be in a male-dominated industry such as what I mean for myself in my background, I deliberately picked industries that are male-dominated, aviation for example. And you know you would say, oh, but I don't have a day of experience in aviation. So what? But you have everything to you know about procurement, don't you? So why can't you start there, right? Telco, oh, it's very male-dominated. Really? Well, give it a shot, give it a shot. You know, 
or plantation. I mean, I'm just talking my own background, right? Or gas industry, for goodness sake. It's so male dominated, manufacturing. Does not matter? You are an expert in procurement or going to be an expert. So go with that. What you do best. You love what you do. That is your guiding star. All right, so far, I think this conversation has been incredibly inspiring for all of us, um, especially for the women in procurement watching us live. So I think before we wrap up, uh, there's this one final question. What are some key takeaways and actionable steps you would share with these ambitious women who are ready to take the lead? Okay, I will have a message, a key takeaway for all the organizations out there. You don't have to be a large global MNC to be able to do this. You know, even if you're a startup or a, you know, SME or a partnership of some sort, you know, you can still do that. But you need to be intentional. So my message is, please make procurement a more equitable and rewarding profession for women. When you think about that, as an organization, and not, not saying it's a, just an HR initiative. I said already just now, it is not an HR initiative. Top leadership needs to take this and be held accountable for this. So how do you, as the chief operations officer or the CEO for that matter, and president of the company, how do you make procurement a more equitable and rewarding profession in your organization for a woman in your organization if you haven't done so. Okay, so that's the organization. That's the key takeaway. And for the women out there, stand up and be counted, please. Please stand up so that we can count you. If you just keep sitting down, nobody's going to see you. You are not going to be visible. So stand up and be counted. And even if you are the only one left standing, so what? If you know that this is what you want, that you want to develop and chart a career in procurement, you know, and, 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 and that's what you do best and you love, go for it, right? So don't compare yourself all the time with others because we are all built very differently, even amongst women, yeah? And whenever you see the innocuous glass ceiling. What do you do? Just go ahead, just shatter it, break it. If you happen to be wearing cowboy boots and not stilettos, just go, give it a kick, go and see what offers. You know, once this glass ceiling breaks, right? The glass is on us, fine. Then what? is in store for us. We need to find out. Don't you want to know? And thirdly, I love this phrase about, I am my sister's keeper. All the women, you need to take care of other women. Don't be selfish. Don't be jealous on, or envious of other women. Please don't do that. You know, so all women, we must continue to support each other, be, be a coach or be uh, a sounding board or be a mentor, you know, provide the guidance because I am my sister's keeper. And that is what I still do today. I love mentoring men and women. It doesn't matter. But if I'm mentoring a woman, these are some of the things I'll keep pushing because what does a mentor do? The mentor is your conscience, actually pushing you forward and has got your back covered and point you to the direction that you ought to be if you're so afraid of making that first step, right? So do that, ladies. Don't be jealous, envious of other women. Don't be, because we are the ones that will suffer in the end. And last but not least, this is a very important thing. We must never forget our male allies. Our male allies, well, for me, you know, who have helped me, uh, uh, paved uh, and, and charted my, my, and navigated, you know, my career, my, my procurement career path all this time. And I'm sure all of us have got male allies as well. 
you know, we, we need to say thank you to them. Look out for these male allies because they will really, really help us. And they will give a different perspective on things, which is super, super insightful and inspirational as well. So at the end of the day, right, the key takeaway is that, you know, procurement is an exciting space to be in now, ever more so because of the fast evolution that's happening. Because now organizations are looking at procurement to come up with some creative solution. It's not just which is the cheapest, I'll buy it. No more that. Today, we have supply chain risks. You know, we have got so many third party risks, risk management from all angles. Procurement professionals, we better be knowledgeable about those risks. We talk about sustainability, right? Same thing, what is sustainable development? We talk about ethical issues, you know, integrity standards. Come on, these are things. And stakeholders today, you know, we, we need to be their business partners. We have the knowledge, we are the internal consultants on procurement. We go and sit at the table with our stakeholders and be engaged in intelligent discussions and conversations on why would you want to spend money on this item to procure from a third party? Why? Gone are the days where we'll just buy what the stakeholders want us to, or we would just do some, you know, a cost analysis and say, this is what it is, and that's it. No. We will do a make versus buy for you, sir, madam, and we'll show you why it is better to make versus buy. Conversations like that. Why can't women do that? And again, procurement is the pulse and the conscience of every organization. Very much so in a household. I think the woman has our place in the household. We are the pulse, we are the conscience as we build a family together with our partners, right? And last but not least, I always say this, right? Hashtag procurement is a sexy profession. It is sexy because the demand is here for us to roll out our sleeves and just jump into this dynamic profession. But first, you must be in love with this profession and give your best. So these are the takeaways for women and also for the organizations that are planning uh, and, and doing more. Yeah. Thank you so much, Christina. You've provided us with a, a lot of fantastic thoughts and covered a lot of ground, but let's not stop there. Uh, so to our audience, if you guys have any questions for the last five minutes, please type it in the chat so we, we can get Dr. Christina to address them in the remaining time. So the first one we have, Gary, curious to know from a procurement or even a general perspective, are there specific skills or qualities that you believe are particularly important for women to cultivate in order to thrive in leadership roles? And what can leaders do to ensure they be developed and honed? Thank you, Gary, for this question. It all boils down to it, it, when you attend a class training or a job exposure or on the job assignments, it is how fast we pick those skills up. You know, for, for myself, for example, as a woman, I have this gut feel. I have this intuition. You know, even if you consider everything else on the table, facts and fingers, and it's, you know, uh, transparent to everyone. But as a woman, there could be some skills qualities that you would use to say, I don't think we should do it now. Or we should consider this other element, you know? So it's be present, uh, be in the room and listen to what that is not said. Look at something that is not seen. And a lot of it has to do with non-verbal communication cues as well. Those are some of the skills that I think we should pick up, you know, and, and, and uh, that's how we would need to supplement that with 
everything else that is available to everyone else. But to me, it is how well you absorb it, how well you assimilate it in your DNA, and from all the experiences and this bold, intentional, courageous self of yours that you say, yes, I think we do it now. Or no, let's wait for one more item, for example, because that particular item is crucial. But maybe not everyone sees it as the same. And that's where diversity comes in. You know, and the rest of the team will say, but why, but why? And that's where we will start discussing. You see what I'm saying? I'm not saying everything a woman says has to be the all and and be all. No, it is the fact that a woman, because of some skill, knowledge, experience, some intuition, will put something on the table and we begin that brainstorming session. It will trigger another idea or another thought. All right. For the next question we have from Kirtana, um, what was your biggest challenge as a woman in procurement? Historically, when I started procurement some, you know, three decades ago, procurement was looked down as administrative. And I myself had actually, you know, looked at procurement to say, oh, what's that? At that time, it was just something that was tough it was associated with logistics, associated with warehousing. So the word procurement wasn't really coined up, coined up at that time. It was more of purchasing, you know. But through the years, thanks to all the, the mentors I've had, I mean, I grew up in a mentorship environment, you know, from, from young, uh, born and bred with mentorship you know, plastered all over me. And till today, I still have mentors uh, and, and also the male allies that I spoke about, you know, and all those women trailblazers that I worked with, you know, they were unselfish uh, people and all this helped. But when you look at your next colleague, he or she may not have the same uh, benefits that you have enjoyed, right? So to me, it is going to look for that if you don't have that, if there's a gap in that area. So when you watch other people having mentors and all that, you should go get it. Because it is very important to know what is what are the gaps that is preventing you. If it's yourself, you need to fix it quickly. But if it's surrounding you, you need to see how you can actually make that happen for yourself as well. Because nobody's going to just put everything on a plate and say, hey, Christina, this is for you. It's not going to be like that. So you need to be resourceful. You need to have resilience, of course. And of course, you need to be very creative to go find things that will make your life easier and talk to people and make friends with people who are unselfish. Surround yourself with, you know, good people. Even if they're smarter than you, it's okay. And always hire people smarter than you because that's where we will learn a lot from even our own teams. Awesome. Okay, I think we have just time for one more. It's not really a question, but uh, it's a comment by Stephanie. So Stephanie says she always tells the guys in her team that they need to support their wives in their career. And the ladies, they have to ask for support from their partner. But my thing is, is this an easy ask? Do you see women being so forthright, upcoming, asking for help and men being that supportive? Well, I would just answer it this way. The baby that cries most will get the milk. So if you're hungry, why are you keeping quiet and hoping that people will notice that you're hungry? It's your partner, for goodness sake. And I agree with Stephanie's comment about Gladys's husband. Super supportive, you know, and if it's not, it, it could be the family support system. You know, sometimes you have to work late. You, you need to travel maybe, you know, or there's a, some negotiation that you need to work on. It's the same with every other profession. So what's the difference? Absolutely. You know, so us and, and take turns, right? You, you can't be, you know, taking all the time. There'll be a time when you need to give as well. So give and take. If you're taking all these, you know, hours from your husband's time, your partner's time, the next time round, you know, have the understanding that he too needs your support. Behind every successful man, there is a woman. And behind every successful woman, there is a man or a, another woman. 
Awesome. Okay. Before we end our conversation today, I want to take a moment to highlight our premier event for anyone passionate about the field. Procurecon Asia uh, is a leading procurement conference happening in Singapore this July, bringing together the brightest minds in the APEC region. And guess who will be there? Our very own guest speaker today, the incredible Dr. Christina Ui. So maybe Dr. Christina, could you share with us why are you excited to be a part of Procurecon Asia and if you want to share, maybe what would you be speaking on this year? Well, it's um, it's the thing that that stands out on ProcureCon, and this is not marketing, and this was not planned. Okay, that I'm supposed to say whatever, and this is what I've observed. This is my sixth year with ProcureCon. Just in case you know, uh, I, I I I I looked back yesterday and I said, wow, this is year number six now. The thing that kept me going back. Uh, is the fact that, uh, first of all, I think there's an amazing team from WBR. WBR is the organizer of ProcureCon, the worldwide business research, right? They make things happen and they're very professional and the awesomeness, I don't know whether there's a word for it, is just contagious. So, you know, people like Laura, Jana, Christabel and Gladys and everyone else that I've met, you know, super work. So keep up with that. But above all is also the content, the rich content. The rich content is not just about, um, you know, the procurement fraternity or the supply chain fraternity. What WBR and ProcureCon does is they look outside of that ecosystem, right? They look at the academia, they look at the government, they, they look at um, industry captains, you know, bringing all these people uh, to come to this forum and talk about things because for the procurement supply chain uh, speakers and all that, we too want to learn to, right? And and know what the captains are thinking out there, you know what I mean? So it's, um, it's you, you, you win a lot this way and you gain a lot. You know, and by giving to as speakers, you also gain equally, if not more. You know, and also the diversity of speakers is just amazing. And last but not least, when you walk in there, I I, I don't know. There's two three days. The atmosphere is different. It's very warm and professional, inclusive. And the best part of it is there is a section just devoted for women leadership in procurement. So that's the best thing that I like about it. I'll be uh, co-hosting with Laura this time and uh, there, there, there'll be wine and, and chocolate and whatever. So first come, first serve for a limited number of seats, you know, for, for that session. And behind closed doors, we talk about, a lot about things. And guys have asked, may I join of course, anyone on a first come, first serve basis? Hope that answers so your question, Laura. Yeah. yeah. So you've got you've heard it from Dr. Christina. This is definitely a must-not miss event. Tickets are still available. So before we go, thank you everyone for joining us. And once again, thank you so much, Dr. Christina, for sharing your wisdom and experience with us today. And it's definitely inspired many, I'm sure. So be sure to follow, follow ProcureCon Asia and Australia's LinkedIn page if you want to stay up to date with fresh perspectives with the leaders like Dr. Christina in the industry. And till then, we'll see you. Bye. Bye, guys. Have a productive week. Take care. Bye.